Philippians 6, 5. Slaves! What? Slaves! Oh, come on. The Bible can be wrong, right? Slaves. Let's go to Matthew 20, 25, as uh, mentioned last week by Anthony in the text, Matthew 20, 25, Jesus called them together and said, You know that rulers of Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And who wa whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Slave. Oh, I don't want to be first. I'll just be the second or third. <laughs> yeah, you know, if I would be first, then I would be a slave. So maybe, well, in the other scriptures, says we are the first of the first fruits. 1 Corinthians 7, 22. I'm not a slave, I'm free, right? Who is a slave? Okay, so you all agree you are free. 1 Corinthians 7, 22. For the one who was a slave when called to faith in the Lord is the Lord's freed person. Similarly, the one who was free, all of us are free, when called is Christ, slave. Back to Ephesians 6, verse 5. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them, not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you are serving the Lord, not people. Is this really true? I mean, society today views work, views working, the work relationship as what can I get out of work, right? I mean, what is it, what is it for me? Who has never felt underpaid, overworked, overstressed, burned out from work? I mean, I bet you one of the worst relationships we have is our work relationship, employer-employee relationship, client, you know, service relationship. Whatever work you do, it has become a stressful activity, a place where you would wish you'd rather not. How oh, come on answer? I'm not really a slave. Are you not a slave? Okay, so let me bring out some pictures. <laughs> so you're not a slave, okay? But in the economics of today, you, if you don't work, you don't get paid. Another picture. <laughs> so, sleeves. Now I think the real issue here is not us being a slave. The real issue here in our work relationship is that does our work really matter to God? I mean, what does it say here? Ultimately, the Bible says, God says, we work for Him. He is our master. Does it matter what kind of work we do? I do. Whether I hammer nails, you know, whether we write a report, sweep the floor, or wipe somebody's behind nursing homes. I mean, does it really matter? Does it really matter to God? In Colossians 3, verse 22, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it. Not only when their eye is on you and to carry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So, I'd like to propose a paradigm shift, the Bible says so, that when we think about our work relationship, we don't work for people, we don't work for our earthly bosses, we work for God. 
Imagine working for God, ultimately for God, as the scripture says. We talk about exalting Christ in ministry. That's our team, exalting Christ in ministry. How can we do that if we, our work relationship, our ministry relationship is all about us and our earthly bosses? We ultimately work for Christ. It must be the foundation Christian ethic. What that means is I don't work for my earthly boss. Stop working for your boss. Does that sound good? Are you relieved? Stop working for your client. Don't work another day for your employer. Work for God, for Jesus Christ. If you say I am self-employed, then stop working for yourself. If you're working at home, raising a family, working for my family, stop it. I don't work for my boss, I don't work for myself, I don't work for my family, I don't work for a corporation, for my company board, for my clients, I don't work for, you know, the owners. I work for God. And imagine a work relationship when you're doing ministry, you just ultimately work for Christ. What will happen? The sincerity of your work, the attitude of your work will change because working for Christ has high standards. And when you work for Christ, you will be free. You will not be complaining too much. You will be free to do whatever you can. You, you will work for Him. So don't do it. Don't work for anyone. God's word says we all ultimately, ultimately work for Him, for Christ. Isn't that good? Aren't you relieved? I mean, all the stress in work, in ministry, is because we always work for our earthly boss, our earthly person. You work for clients, you work for people who give us people. Just imagine, work for Christ. Isn't that glorious? Isn't that exalting Him in ministry? And that changes everything. God says, listen to me. Work for me. I am your boss. If we work for God, all our earthly expectations will exceed. Why? As I told you, working for God has higher standards. Newsflash in the future. Do you think God will allow laziness in heaven? All the lazy people are not there. All the complainers are not there in heaven. We will be working for God forever in heaven. We will be working for God forever in heaven. I don't know about you, but that's, that sounds... Whatever your mind is thinking, that may sound horrible, that may sound <laughs> rejoiceful, that may sound a, like a party, that may sound like, I am working for God forever? Wow! Really? Know about your Bible. Do you want to work for God in heaven? Do you want to work for God in heaven? Start now. 